Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello. It's wonderful to see these goats. <laughs> I'm surprised they're all awake. <laughs> name of this goat, Ed. You what? Does this goat have a name? I, I don't know. Oh, it's Brett the goat. Right, excellent. Yeah. Oh, hello, Brett. Hiya. <laughs> oh, he's cute, isn't he? Oh. Yeah. I tell you what, uh, I honestly think that, that uh, Brett should be doing the daily briefings from Downing Street. <laughs> we could do voiceovers. Here we have Matt Hancock. <laughs> Sorry, Brett. There is no reason to. Uh, Brett, can there. you give us an update on the track and trace? <laughs> <laughs> How's that looking for next week? Brett, can you tell us what, what the figures are for, what the R number is at the moment? I'd rather sniff some poo. Oh well. <laughs> it's a bit more interesting Just than the like Matt Hancock. <laughs> Apparently. No comment. Oh. 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 One at the corner. Nobody puts it in the corner. Nobody oh, puts goat in the corner. Maybe we should buy a goat egg. Really? Yeah. But really? This is, this is genius. Oh. oh, hi, Brett. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole point of the go is to just chill everybody out um, yeah. while we're doing this. Um, but also, I'm just trying to sort out the, uh, the live stream onto Facebook. So talk amongst yourself, Stuart, you know. Talk amongst... Oh, who's that? This Brett's got a pal. Yeah. I, oh. I Two goats Aww. for the price of one. Two goats? Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. There's Boris. Hey, right, Boris, come out from under the hay. Tell us what's going on. Uh, I was going to wonder what had happened to the Dominic Cummings goat, but uh, <laughs> clearly gone to Durham. Dominic Castle. Yeah. <laughs> going to Durham. He's out checking if his eyes are working. <laughs> oh, there he is. Have you, I mean, I, I mean, what time do goats go to bed at? I wonder. Ask him, Stuart. Do you think they woke him up? I hope we didn't wake him up. Is there audio? Can Brett hear me? Brett. <laughs> 
I think Brett is actually the guy that owns the farm. All right. Well, it says Brett the goat here. Look, it says it says Brett the goat. Maybe he's just. Well, we met three goats last time. Apparently, Brett Crook shanked everyone. Mm. Well, I'm sorry, Brett, if you're not actually a goat and you're the man with the camera. I wouldn't stand nope, for that. I'm Brett. I am a goat. Brett is a goat. Look. Oh, okay. I am a goat. Well, I mean, I suppose you're on a good feed. There's a lot of mental health nurses here, Brett. If you are, yeah. if you're actually a human and you think you're a goat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're entitled to think, to believe that you're a goat, and we will address you as goat, if yeah. you like. Yeah. Every goat is welcome. Well, you got a few. BJ, what about this at Congress, do you think, just to get everybody in their seats? <laughs> <sighs> it sort of sounds like Congress coming in, to be honest. No, it's far more organised and... It's the it's the procedural mic. <laughs> oh, goats for Congress. What's for Congress? Goats for Congress. Goats for Congress. Goats for Congress. Goats for Congress. There's that lady bee shouting there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move you under moment. extreme pressure. <laughs> Uh, Murdo Mitchell's wondering what he's signed up for and Lee's really wondering what he's signed up for. <laughs> Should we sing to them in our beautiful voices? No. I don't know. <laughs> Say yes. Uh, Brett's got to split, yeah. folks. That's our ten minutes with the uh with the goats. Brett, oh. Brett everyone thank you a cheer so for much. Brett. Oh woo, Brett, woo, thank so you. wonderful. Yeah. Everybody use your reactions on your uh, on your Zoom, just clap your hands there. Bye, Brett. Outstanding. Outstanding. Goats for well, you. Yeah. You can ask yourself how many podcasts you've been at over the lockdown that had goats. Mm. RMN behaving badly. A topical, political, and honestly, officer, I'm only doing this to check my eyesight podcast about mental health nursing in the United Kingdom. Your hosts are Stuart McKenzie and me, Ed Freshwater. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Stuart. How are you doing? You've muted yourself, haven't you? No, I'm not. I've not oh, muted okay. myself. Well, you've just been rude I'm then. I'm fine. I I'm asked you how you are. I'm fine. How are you? Oh, well, I'm a little tetchy now. I know you're a little touch. That was quite tense because the goats had me kind of like on a nice vibe, and then it was all that was a thing. All these it people were arriving and professional. We we didn't have we didn't have any any like indication that we were about to start, and then all these people arrived, and it was a bit kind of like anxiety provoking. But I feel okay now. I've seen some faces I know and lots of names that I know, so that's lovely. Okay, um, I guess we need to address the elephant in the room there, Stuart. What is going on with your head? So because <clears> I can see I through your this, hair. I have no idea what's going on. Also, can, your eyes look like you're possessed by evil well, spirits. Well, I am possessed, right? Okay. That is, is my want. Okay. I have no idea what's happening with my hair. I've tried to fix it. It's either this or it's the, just the green blanket that's behind me. I suspect it's because I've not had my hair cut for nine weeks and I'm going grey. Okay. That is what I suspect. And the reason yours isn't doing that is because you have no hair. I resent that comment, but it's entirely factual. <laughs> so, what's happened to your tie what tonight, to Stuart? As well, I, I dress oh, up it's smart. It's too hot. It's like nineteen degrees in Glasgow. It's positively tropical. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't passed out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's like fans and aircon and everything going in here. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the things I always loved about uh, living in Scotland. Is whenever the temperature got into double figures, then people would just start dying. But um, but that's funny <laughs> what, as opposed to coronavirus <laughs> Meta hey, metaphorically <laughs> really? metaphorically hey do you know i'm no. gonna bleep this bit out uh, it's a bit late it's live let's, yeah <laughs> let's come in again i remember behaving badly and ignore the other bit that i said it wasn't me it was somebody else I, do you know what i'm going to brave this out and just lie completely deny point blank that i said it even though it's on recording and do you know who i've hey, learned did, you, did you just say that people die because of heat 
Uh, I think I'm that? not an expert on heat. I tell you what, we'll organise a briefing in my garden for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we'll, we'll get the media around. And I will in and no can, way apologise. You can be half an hour late. Make sure you put your shirt under your pillowcase Mate, the night before. Starched. Starched. Right, so that, it, so that it's nice and crinkly, because that's what the public want to see. Kind of lo-fi <laughs> production type approach. Because right, because you've got just cause your head's transparent, mate. Don't try and bring everybody down to your level. Oh, is that a euphemism? <laughs> <laughs> My head's transparent. So let's, let, let's just be right. People in Scotland die when it's too hot and I've got a transparent head. You really are not doing well on, the end of, on that whole kind of like inclusivity front at the moment. Do you we'll know just start picking on the list. Do you know what it is, Stuart? Do you know what it is? I haven't had enough of this yet. Oh, I, oh yeah, cheers. Yeah. Slange of That's water. That's <laughs> vodka. Come on, be honest. <laughs> straight from straight from my potato machine. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got an amazing show lined up tonight, people. We have, uh, as you know, and we've been advertising. We've got uh, Lee Ridley with us, Lost Voice Guy. An absolute privilege to be with Lee. We had a, a quite a funny. Um, catch up in a production meeting the other night and Lee stuck his camera on quite early as um, some some folk were leaving. He was clearly having a party. I'm not sure that Lee's been sticking to the lockdown rules, but we'll let him explain that to you yourself. <laughs> um, and we've got Murdo Mitchell who thought that the sound check was actually last night. So we've been pretty good this week at being organised, haven't we? All the previous acts turned up when they were meant to turn up and, you know, they came along and made you laugh. So. Do you know what? You got a goat on schedule tonight. For the people Absolutely. listening to the audio of this, that's that's going to be completely meaningless, though. <laughs> but they, are they going to actually have to listen to 10 minutes of goats? No, I'll edit out the 10 <laughs> minutes of... <laughs> 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 I so, I, did, if, did we record that? Are we allowed to do voiceovers with the with the actual daily brief with those goats? <laughs> <laughs> do we own that? Don't goat me on that. <laughs> so yeah we've got uh, we've got some live music tonight and we've also got uh some some live comedy it's been a bit of a drought with stuff to talk about for us yeah i know uh, oh, listen before we get um before we get into the into the political matters and the and the topical matters of the day um i just wanted to remind folk when you're listening we've got the act on obviously they can't hear you which is particularly tough for uh, stand up comedians who who you know rely on hearing feedback from the from the audience to to be able to sort of craft their message and all of that um but you have got a reactions button on there so what i'd love to see when uh when lee's on when murdo's on and you know when i say something funny don't do it for Stuart. but uh, click on your reactions there and give them a little hand clap just let them know how well they're doing but not for Stuart. He's not allowed to craft kind of their message. What's that? I don't know. Like I said, I'm nowhere near drunk me- enough. <laughs> craft their message. Move on, Stuart. I'm, you're we need to cracker. move on. <laughs> Only because you want to move on from that. <laughs> You've been hanging out with Dominic. It wasn't Durham we drove to. It was Birmingham. It was, it was Birmingham. Yeah, he came here, and uh, and we had a we had a frank and honest conversation. Yeah, yeah. So nasty. Yeah, it's been a bit of a. Uh, it's been a drought, hasn't it? He's just he's just unelected, he's unaccountable, he's untouchable. Uh, what on uh, earth are we going to talk about tonight? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and Matt's been out there as well. I mean, Matt tweeted tonight saying that he was really pleased that the races were starting again on Monday. <laughs> Matt who? Matt? <laughs> what? Hank, the only Matt. The one uh, and only Matt. <laughs> right. Are we going to be talking about what Matt Hancock has been up to? It's a tradition, isn't it? In that case, let's have our jingle. RMN Behaving Badly presents Hancock's Half-Cocked. There we go. Now you can talk about him. What is it to say? You know, the culmination of the weekend, Matt is happy that the races are back. (laughs) I know. (laughs) That <laughs> it was reported in the news today that but right that, that they're quite clear that the infection rate is critical, but Matt's happy the races are back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, the really important thing is that sport is uh, is allowed to uh, continue unabated. Uh, unlike a badger or yeah. a fox when a horse is chasing it. 
Okay, now who's going off on one, Stuart? That's really <laughs> weird. So, but I, but I just, I, I find it incredible that in a week where we've had an advisor, clearly, what I, what I really thought, when, when Matt came out and backed um, Dominic Cummings and was, no, he's a man, he's got lots of integrity, he's, he's full of integrity. Yeah, uh, sure. I, it's, it's full of something, but it's no integrity. And he is... He's, he's, he's the right hand, you know, he's, he's such an integral part of what we're trying to do here. And he's got the backing of the entire cabinet. And then I'm beginning to wonder, actually, that's because actually he's probably in a more of a, a strong position within the cabinet than you are, Matt, <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> and there's more every likelihood that if he tells Boris to get rid of you, that you would go. And it, it's interesting as well, because... Only at the start of the week as well, Matt tweeted that the nursing, the numbers of registered nurses were up and they were heading towards their target of 50,000 extra nurses in the NHS as they pledged. And there was me wondering, did Matt, once again, he just can't leave the nursing numbers alone, can he? No. 50,000, one per tree. One per tree. And, and the thing that gets me as well about the nursing numbers is he wasn't able to articulate how many of those were returning nurses and how many of those nurses were nurses on the, per, the temporary register who were third year student nurses. Mm -hmm. But they've got, uh, we're, we're really learning what the government's uh, relationship with factual numbers um, is. We're, we're learning how detached they are from reality. Uh, when they chuck numbers out, they love to have a target, don't they? They it's absolutely love to just set it? a target and and I, make it a meaningless number. But who are they setting these numbers for? It was fifty thousand new nurses. It was fifty thousand trees. It was what was the hundred thousand? I don't know. Oh, it was something stupid like hundred thousand chisels for every child or something like that. <laughs> they, they chuck out the the numbers for testing, and and I wanted to speak for a minute about the the COVID testing uh, numbers they chuck out because they said we're going to have a hundred thousand tests per day um, by the end of April. Now, uh, at the end of April. They said they'd achieved just over 120,000. How did they suddenly leap to 120,000? They posted out tens of thousands of testing kits, home testing kits, where you, you get a swab and you shove it up your nose and then you shove it to the back of your throat without touching your tongue. And then you post it back again. And they counted all of the ones that they posted out. But they, po they counted them on the day that they posted them, not on the day that they arrived with people and not on the day that they were completed correctly and posted back or not on the day when the tests were actually processed. So we've got people that will just, you know, can we do that with our taxes? <laughs> Seriously, can, can I do that when it comes to my council tax? Oh, no, I've paid you. I've paid you. I mean, the money's actually gone into research, but, you know, I have paid you because it counts as research towards council tax. So how on earth does that work? But I, I tell you what, during the, during the last week, I listened to uh, the BBC's More or Less program, which is because I love economics, which because I'm a complete geek. But they broke down the numbers. So on the 15th of May, the government said that they had completed 136,486 tests which was way above their promise of 100,000. But what they'd done in that was they had counted out all the ones that they'd posted that morning. They'd counted 30,000 uh, tests that were being done for research purposes, which were not diagnostic tests. And they also counted, uh, if you went to a drive-through, um, drive-through, that's just so weird, but you went to a drive-through testing site, you oh, get a big throat, Mac. yeah, a oh, Big Mac, a and check if I've got swab. COVID, please. And some cheesy bites. <laughs> yeah, but if you get a throat, do you want to Mac? Do you want to Mac that? Do you want to yeah. enlarge that up? <laughs> no, I do not. I want the smallest thing to go up my nose, please. Um, <laughs> but if if you get your throat swabbed, and you get um, uh, and you get your nose swabbed, they counted that as two tests, even though it was on the same person. So actually what they worked out was out of their promise of 136,486 tests completed that day, you take out the research ones and you take out the ones that they posted out but weren't actually done. They did 69,000 
uh, and 900 diagnostic tests, but they did them on 43,298 people. Look, you're quoting statistics mm -hmm. in a time when numbers mean nothing. Yeah. And I suppose what I would say is that I said, I, my wife is listening to me. I'm shite with numbers, right? I've always been shite with numbers. But what I do know is when somebody's talking pish. <laughs> <laughs> It's that essential right. mental health nursing right. skill that they teach you As in day one. As a mental one. health nurse of over 20 right, class, years. sit down, we're about to tell you what talking pish sounds like. <laughs> right. I know when somebody's talking pish, and when they can't kind of look straight in your face, and things are, um, blah, 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 walk here, yes, and then into the drive through and blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, well, my, what do you my say? Wife and I, oh, well, uh, well, mm, well, well, if you'd like mm. to look at the picture behind me, look, yes. of the Queen, I'm very loyal, you know. Oh, um, I, I believe uh, I've answered that question. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I pass you over to Dominic. Well, piss off me, I'm away for a drive. Do you know what? <laughs> 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 look, um, shit, let me pass you over to a nurse instead. <laughs> I can't answer that, so here's somebody with integrity to not answer the question for you. <laughs> Do we employ this nurse? Is this, mm. a, is, this a, is this a very important nurse? Shit, I can't even fire them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's this thing where you just, you, you watch this, this stream of absolute bile emanate from these people they're just big noise making machines mm -hmm. it's just numbers there's no there's there's no fact if we were to approach how we report on the care if the government sent me a memo and said uh, could you just provide us with how many uh, young, young people uh, access to as i've been doing for the last two weeks um can you you know how, how have services been running during the lockdown and how many young people have been accessing services and what are the bed status days and what are this and what are that we send them figures we don't just go yes yes we've got we've had fifty thousand people in a bed but you, you only have you only have 200 beds mm -hmm. no, no fuck off it's all right nothing to see here we've got there's fifty thousand people in this hospital <laughs> <laughs> and, and how many people have the CPNs been seeing? Two million every day. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what I do. <laughs> but so it, you it, should see the diaries. I tell you what, I'm, I'm <laughs> almost at the point of admiring this skill of just completely double doubling down on what is clearly fictitious. And the only reason I'm not calling it lying is I don't want to end up in court. <laughs> okay, even though which I'm is why I say it's the case that I would win. My um, perception is they're talking pish, right? So yeah. I'm going to stay away from lies and truth. Mm -hmm. the, you know, there is just this ability to cut, and, and they don't even blink now. You know, mm -hmm. they, wouldn't it be brilliant if you could just do oh, that? How many? 147,209, Yeah. Darling, did you feed the dog? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I fed the dog. I've always been clear that I would feed the dog. The dog has been fed, and that is not open to question. You are talking down dogs when you say the dog has not been fed. I bet. Well, I'm um, sorry. Dogs, am I not, am I not being kind? Am I not being kind when I yeah. ask a, a reasonable you're question? You're not considering my mental health when you question me whether or not I fed the dog. Have you done the so, dishes? Uh, yes, I did the dishes, but I can uh, see the uh, dishes but, are still dirty but, but, just as they were again, when I went what upstairs. I do is, I put them in the sink steeping, right? So if they're steeping, you've technically done the dishes. You've adhered to the spirit of doing the dishes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, so basically politicians have put the dirty dishes in the bubbly water in the sink, right? They've not washed the dishes or put them on the dryer. They've just <laughs> sat them in the sink. <laughs> Where's the PP? Uh, it's in the sink. I'm, I'm, I'm really desperate for the day, Stuart, that you get elected to some sort of governmental office and, and you just get a flashback of this conversation and somebody asks you, did you complete the budget requests? And you go, I left it steeping in the sink. <laughs> steeping in the sink? I used fairy <laughs> and everything. It's evidence-based and my mm -hmm. hands are nice and soft as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, it, 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 it just it beggars belief. And mm -hmm. at the same time as all that's going on, the one bit of information that got lost in the whole Dominic Cummings thing is whilst every politician was going on about how he didn't break the law or how he acted with integrity as a family man, 
Nobody reported the fact that the detective chief inspector or the, de- or the, de- the chief constable for, for the Durham area said it's not actually politicians' jobs to apply or interpret the law. They make the law. The judiciary and the police are separate. So whilst they're all telling you he didn't break the law, that's not their job. It's <laughs> their job as the police to decide if we think mm-hmm. somebody's broken the law. And then we go to the Crown Prosecution Service and we say, we think this person's broken the law. Would you like to test that against the law and then tell us if a prosecution should be brought? And, and that's, that's really, that, at the heart of this, that's what's really worrying. This whole week, politicians, and I'm not sure, if, I'm, I'm pretty confident none of them are actually lawyers, qualified, none of them studied law, telling us that he didn't break the law. Yeah. Is that, that, that's disingenuous. What, from a government minister? Well, there you are, but he didn't break the law. It's all right to drive 230 miles. Mm-hmm. Do you know? And then the question and then was another asked therapy, Michael Gove. And then another it, 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 so if he got out of the car and he infected other people, whoa, 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 whoa. no, he wouldn't have done that. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's a good guy. He He's a good guy. He's a, nah. mm. Anyway, I'm looking at the time and I'm thinking we should stop ranting for a bit. <laughs> My God, what's the point of this podcast if it's not me and you ranting? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I, you know, at the end of the day, we're in a situation where it doesn't really matter what we say. It didn't happen. None of this happened. None of mm-hmm. this is really happening. Truth is lies. Up is down. Ah, well, 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 well. <sighs> so I just want to say, Jenny Lee Sim has got her badge on, and I like to see the badges, her patron's badges. I've got my That's badge nice. on too. I, I don't have my badge. It's not arrived. Are you sure? Because I, I sent it first class. Well, I don't want to get into some sort of Dominic Cummings type conversation here, but I've been to the door and I have looked at the letterbox and there is no mail with a badge in it. Uh, I posted it to your missus, that's why. <laughs> My missus in the background laughing. Have you got the badges, Sarah? You didn't tell me. <laughs> Sarah's sitting with two and <laughs> You never know. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, what was your point, Stuart? Get to your point. I was just going to get my point and say that actually we should just pass over to Lee for the next 10 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's he's, do that. See he's, he's here with a fabulous NHS t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in his condo. Eh? Must be all right when in Britain's got talent. <laughs> <laughs> That's super. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, use your reaction button. Get your hand clapping out there. For Lost Voice okay, Guy. Okay, folks, we're going to pass over to Lost Voice Guy, Lee Ridley. Lee, it's the, the stage is yours, sir. Need to be that sweet. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get started, some of you may have seen me on Britain's Got Talent. Well, if you expect me to be that sweet and innocent now, you're in for a big fucking surprise. (laughs) If you missed it, my audition is on YouTube. I think the person who uploaded it is taking the piss though, because the comments are disabled. It's been really crazy since I won Britain's Got Talent. Yesterday I was invited onto a radio show to do an interview, but I couldn't be bothered going. So I just sent my iPad and a note saying, press play. It was such an honour to win the show. (laughs) I hope my parents can be proud of me now. Because it's been 37 years and they are still waiting to hear if my first word is going to be mummy or daddy. (laughs) It's hard to describe how scary it was walking out in front of the Britain's Got Talent judges for the first time. Put it this way, my lucky white pants are now my lucky brown pants. You're probably wondering what was the best thing about winning the show. Was it the 250 grand prize money or the chance to perform in front of the royal family? Well, 
I'd love to answer that question, but according to this new iPad, it's time to drive my Porsche to the airport and get on my private jet to Monte Carlo. <laughs> I'm joking. As if I drive myself to the airport. One of the main advantages of winning a television show is that I get a lot more female attention. That's right. My grandma rings me at least twice a week now. The other day, this beautiful young woman wanted a selfie. As she took the picture, she asked me to say cheese. So now she's got a photo of the top of my head and me frantically typing the word Gorgonzola into my iPad. I've even had the opportunity to perform in America. It was such a great experience flying first class to Los Angeles. In fact, I was speechless on the plane. But that's the problem with being put into flight mode. If you are wondering how I got disabled, it's because I didn't forward that chain email to 10 of my closest friends when I was younger. Let me tell you, you get asked some really strange questions when you are disabled though. One of the questions I get asked most often is what is it like living with cerebral palsy? To be honest, it's a right pain in the ass. Recently, I was asked what sort of cerebral palsy I had. I wasn't even aware that there was different brands of it. I have definitely not got any design brand of cerebral palsy. I think I picked mine up from Primark. Whenever I'm asked what sort of cerebral palsy I have, I always want to say I've got the bad kind. I don't know what they expect me to say. Next, they will be asking me to rate my cerebral palsy on a scale from 1 to 10. 10 being really bad and 1 being a benefit cheat appearing on the Jeremy Kybel show. I have been called many different names in the past. Just last week someone called me physically challenged, which I always thought was a game on the crystal maze. Of course, other names have not been as nice. In fact, I am sick of getting pointed at, laughed at, looked at strangely treated as if I am stupid and called names just because I am different. It's not even my fault that I'm from Newcastle. When people find out more about my disability, they start to tell me how sorry they are. Everyone is so sorry all the time. Sorry to hear I can't talk. Sorry about my walk. Sorry, I will never make it on to Strictly Come Dancing. But I say, screw them. Don't feel sorry for me. I've already told you that I'm a complete bastard. I'm the sort of guy who presses every button in the lid when I'm getting out of it. I'm the kind of guy who makes people move out of the disabled space on the train, even when the whole carriage is empty. I'm that person who gets up to do karaoke and then pretends the microphone is broken when no sound comes out of my mouth. One of the worst things about my disability is having my hair cut. I really don't like getting it done. Everything about the process is just so awkward. The main reason why I don't like it is because once the cloak is on, and my hands are trapped. I can't speak at all. In fact, I didn't even want this hair cut. However, there was no way of asking them to stop once it had started. But I still had to nod and smile and pay £30 for the privilege. Also, 
the banter with my hairdresser is very one-sided indeed. Needless to say, she still doesn't know where I'm going on holiday this year. I often get asked if I am out with my carer as well. I really wish people would stop thinking that the people I am out with must be my carers. Because obviously disabled people couldn't just be out with friends. That would just be stupid. Just to put the record straight, I have always been very social and have a lot of mates. I had some great friends at school. I think it's rather different when you attend a school for disabled people compared to a mainstream school. In mainstream schools, it is the fittest and most attractive children who are most popular. But it wasn't like that for me. At my school, you were judged on how bad your disability was. If there wasn't that much wrong with you, then you were bullied for being too normal. And let me tell you, you don't want to be on the receiving end of an electric wheelchair. Let's just say that it's not only rappers who get injured in drive-bys. Like most good friends, we got up to our fair share of mischief when we were together. Such as the time I borrowed my friend's wheelchair and stood outside a church, trying to sell it because a miracle had happened and I had been healed. Or when I went to the zoo with my mate who had only one leg, went into the lion enclosure and asked him to point out which one of the lions had took the other leg in front of loads of children. And we used to love sending my blind friend really erotic letters from a pretend girlfriend because we knew his mother would have to read them to him. Another question that I get asked quite often is, have I ever tried to talk just to see what would happen? As if I had just been lazy all of my life and therefore just couldn't be bothered to talk. Like I was only putting it on to take advantage and jump the queues at Disney World. But, in case you are wondering, no, I haven't tried to talk before. Mainly because I know nothing would fucking happen. I'm not going to suddenly open my mouth and hear Brian Blessed's voice booming out. Besides, I've built a career out of not being able to speak now. I don't think I should be encouraging my voice to magically reappear too much. The found voice guy just doesn't have the same ring to it. I do actually talk in my sleep though. I know I do because I always wake up with random sentences typed out on my iPad. Admittedly, this job would be so much easier if I could talk. Because apparently it's very important to get your tone of voice right when doing comedy. So that means I'm completely fucked. For example, this is what I sound like when I'm excited. And this is what I sound like when I'm miserable. And this is what I sound like when I'm happy. And this is what I sound like when I'm bored. In fact, the only time I sound any different is on Sunday nights when I pretend to be a woman. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been the lost voice guy. If you find my voice, please contact me as soon as possible on my social media. You've been a fantastic audience. Oh. Even if oh. you, I can't really change what I say at this point. I hope you had it fun laughing at a disabled man. Enjoy the rest of your night. Oh, we. Oui. Oh, can we open that? Open that up, Ed. For. Woo! Hey! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Bravo! Outstanding. Woo
Outstanding. Yeah. I've I've known Lee for six years, Lee, and honestly, every single time um, I've seen you perform, the first time I seen you perform, Susan Morrison said, "You need to see this guy," and uh, and you just blew me away, Lee. And I, I have to say, your ability to to make able-bodied people think about their actions and their interactions with people living and experiencing disability and doing it in a way that really turns it back on them is just outstanding. So thank you, Lee. Thanks for uh, agreeing to come on and, and do the show with us tonight. It just is such a privilege. Thank you. Absolutely uh, outstanding stuff. Thank you very much, Lee. So Lee's, Lee's got his book out. And um, I read, I've read, I've got to say, Lee, it arrived, it arrived a couple of, a few days ago and I've been reading it and I'm, I'm kind of halfway through and I have to say it just, the, 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 even in the opening chapter when you talk about, um, and you should, you, as mental health nurses, we, we're often in a situation where we work with people who, who he, what they hear and what they say are very, very different, but it was really, it was really interesting to read the book, Lee, and and you spoke about your your head voice, and what you sound like to you, and and that just that that sense of identity of being a Geordie, and and how you we I and you know and, and and how you you associate yourself with your culture, that that just blew me away. And um, what was what was the hardest? What was the what was the best bit to write in the book? Can you, can you answer that for, for us? My favourite part of the book to write was definitely my Britain's Got Talent experience. The whole thing was such a great pleasure. Winning the show has changed my life in so many ways. I'm busier than I ever was before as a comedian. I've been on a nationwide tour and I have also written a book called I'm Only in It for the Parking. The general public have been so supportive as well. I'm always getting stopped for selfies and having people congratulate me. And it has been really nice. I'm very grateful for all the kind words I have received. One of the best things to happen since I won is that people are engaging with me a lot more than they would have in the past. For the first time, they seem comfortable talking to a disabled person. I'm used to being stared at for negative reasons, so it's nice to be stared at for positive reasons for a change. Mm. Ah, that, 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 that's, I, I can't even imagine Lee, the, 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 the change and, and, and how that, you know, living in, with one set of circumstances and then that propelled into the, the limelight and, and, and how you've coped with that is just incredible. What, what, was the, what was the hardest part of the book to write, do you think? The thing that was hardest to write about was definitely the stuff about my granddad, who's no longer with us. In a way, it was nice to go back and think about all the good memories we created together, but it also made me realise just how much I still miss him. I really wish he was around today to see everything that I have achieved. Uh, I, I get that. I get that. Absolutely get that. And when we were, I was thinking about questions as, as well for you, and, and we've got a signed copy of his, kindly signed a copy of his book. And we'll give that away tonight to someone. Um, you, you really make the reader think about your disability and how you view the world through through that disability. And and that that you, but you do it in such a subtle way. It, 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 it's it's really quite engaging. And is there anything that you could tell us as nurses, as someone who's been in the situation of? needing care of people making assumptions that they're doing things for the right reason like you had said before they assume that when people are with you that they're your carers rather than they're your friends is there anything that you feel that we should we should be cognizant of as nurses i would just tell them to treat the disabled person just like anybody else after all we're not that different when you think about it you need to give me room to live my life. Trust that if I want help, I will say so. I'll tell you right now 
you will need to carry the drinks to our table. Offer your arm when the stairs have no railing and hold my hand through at least one major medical event. If you want to be the hero, that is how. Otherwise, back off and listen. Give my body the Roman time it needs. I've lived with my disability all of my life. I know what I'm capable of. And I'm also very independent. So I want to do as much as possible myself. I, I totally get that, Lee, and, and I've seen you in action where Susan Morrison brought this up, so you can you can pick it up with Susan Morrison, she breached this confidence, but um, when you were playing for us in Liverpool in 2015, I think it was, 2014, and y you went well, but you still went on stage, and you were really, really clear, and you were, there were five or six of us who were nurses, and we're going, Lee, we really think you shouldn't do this. And you're, you basically told us to fuck off. <laughs> 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 that you, you knew your body and you were going to do it. And that was it. You were, you were there to perform. So just back off and let me do it. And I, and I, I, I was in awe. <laughs> um, Sarah Waters, one of our... our um, one of the community had said, and, and Sarah lives, um, you know, she would use a, a mobility aid, and she says, Sarah asks the question, I wanted to be a wheelchair Olympian. Is there a disability sport you would have liked to have done, Lee? went horse riding, but my horse honestly only had one eye, so we were fucked from the start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fabulous, man. Absolutely. We'll not put you down for the dressage then. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's only one more thing, and you put this in the book, so you asked for this yourself, right? You asked for this. What did you have for breakfast, Lee? <laughs> He's pissing himself because he fucking knows. He knows. What did you have for your breakfast? We tarics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, we. It's been an absolute privilege, and you know, I, I think what you do is just genius, and it's art. And anyone who cannot. You know, I, I've spoken to people when you've performed for us and they felt they, they, they can't laugh because they feel that, that it's not appropriate. You have you, you've broken, you've broken barriers, you've bro broken boundaries and you've absolutely propelled the, the ability, the skill and the art that anyone can bring to, um, to, to comedy, Lee. So thank you so much for doing that and thank you for spending time with us this evening. Thanks very much. Amazing. What, folks, a round of applause for Lee. Awesome. So, um, Lee has, has, has just given us an, an amazing performance and absolutely superb. And we moved from that. So we're going to try something different tonight. Um, we've, uh, we've brought along a, a, a young uh, singer-songwriter called Murdo Mitchell, uh, who is uh, an exceptional talent, in my opinion, and someone who I... I genuinely believe is um that you'll enjoy uh just bigging you're me up you're making, me, you're making me blush here yeah. i i know, oh, that's I, know, the idea. I, know. <laughs> I see idea don't fuck it up uh, uh, no, so, me, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so what we thought was you know the lockdown season we've done quite a bit of comedy um i think that you know, it's really important to recognise as well that a lot of the artists that, that have been performing and coming in to work with us have been doing it massively, massively undercut from what they would normally do. The arts have been hammered. And um, as, as you've seen, uh, I read a, an article by the National Union of uh, Musicians, the Musicians Union, about just how difficult it is. Um, so much like with comedy, 
clubs are closed and normal performance circumstances are gone, such as uh, Murdo and his band, uh, Delphi, have a whole year's worth of gigs cancelled. Is that right, Murdo? Yeah, pretty much. But so they, they, we were booked for a couple of festivals as well, which were annoying. And then uh, yeah. they got cancelled everything. And also just, even just like, so I gig for money as well. I gig, I gig about the place in London and uh, yeah. I have residencies. So I have like three residencies a week and they're all gone as well. But uh, yeah. it's good to be back in Scotland. So you've got to look at the, the bright side. I know, and a tropical heat wave for us as well, Murdo. Yeah, I don't exactly. know how you're coping. I know, I know, I'd terrible. factor a hundred on today. <laughs> That's called paint, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> I'd gloss on. That's what I had on. <laughs> that Yo, explains your transparent you, that, head, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, I'll put my cap a tracksuit and my baseball cap on. So, I dare um, you. <laughs> my wife's in the other room knowing that I've got them it's a Nike <laughs> shell suit so um, I, I was I, I'm really really keen to, to make sure that our acts don't um, give their time for free Murdo has his website and he has a patron uh, or he has um, the ability to, to send out CDs uh, I I would have a paper, I have a paper. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the spiel here we go I've you do the spiel I'll... <laughs> but I'm threatening people right. to buy I've, your I've CD. I've got the spiel in the, in the outro, don't you? I, I'm back in Glasgow, so that posh voice that I put in my YouTube videos so I don't scare the Londoners for giving me buskin money's gone, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, you go to London and pretend you're from Edinburgh. <laughs> the thing is, though, when, actually, when I'm in London, you know, people are always like, oh, yeah, where are you from? And you say Glasgow, and they're like, oh, it's, it's quite... It's quite, you know, quite dangerous up there. And you're, oh, aye, oh, aye, it's dangerous up oh, there. Aye, aye. Aye. Leave my busking money alone or I'll chip you. <laughs> <laughs> up, here, I'm, up here, I'm posh Scottish. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So uh, we're going to hand over to Murdo, who's going to do um, a bit of an acoustic set for us and uh, a big round of applause for Murdo Mitchell. Oh, hang on. Hey. I can't get my video. And I get your video. It's a vote in Notman again. Aye. Eat yourself, <laughs> East Coast. I vote. Oh. Are we not getting any tit shots this week, Yvonne? Oh, no, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Pure class. <laughs> Quality. Right. Over to you, Murdo. Can you hear the guitar okay? Got you. Right, so this, next, this first song is... Uh... Is that a song I wrote during lockdown? I'm just going to take some of that echo off. Okay. Mm. It's got nothing to do with lockdown, by the way, but I just wrote it during it. In circle, in circle round my mind. Pedal this idea that I'm fine Helplessly hoping for different outcomes But the same result every time Forgiving myself is harder than I thought I'm falling down but I tied a safe knot How can you Oh, wait a minute. You're back now. What happened there? What happened? I don't know, but somebody muted you. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's off to a good start then. <laughs> yeah, good old Zoom, thank you. Forgiving myself is harder than I thought. I'm falling down, but I tied a safe knot. How can you love me? After all the hurt that I caused you After all the pain How does it feel when I lay upon you? But I don't know what to do If I couldn't have you In down in the lowlands around and I try to escape, but I just can't See I'm stuck to the ground and I can't get up now So I'm drowning in the dark till I'm done 
It's over now and I cannot retract I tell the truth but you just turn your back How can you love me After all the hurt that I caused you After all the pain How does it feel when I lay upon you but I don't know what to do if I couldn't have you. I'm coming up fast and you're coming up slow. Do you want me to leave? Should I just cut the road? Cut the road? No, no. Cut the road, no, no. Cut the road, na na. 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 Cut the How can you love me after all the hurt that I caused you? After all the pain, how does it feel when I lay upon you? But I don't know what to do. But I don't know what to do if I couldn't have you. Fantastic. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Oh, thank you very much. Brilliant, 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 Marto. Right, I'll, I'll play a cover for you all. This next song is a, a song by CeeLo Green. I only played it, I only learned it like two weeks ago. But only because it's like a, a jam. And if you do like what you hear, by the way, I do have, I've got Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Tinder, t I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. It does, it does. Grinder, AsiansGoDating.com, uh, I'm on so all the sites. Not fussy is what you're saying. <laughs> uh, take it in. Something so different about that day Even your emotions have an echo When you're out in space When you're out there without care And you're out of love And it wasn't because I didn't know enough I just knew too much Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? That make me crazy? Probably. Oh, and I hope you're having the time of your life. Well, think twice. This only advice. Now who do you, who do you, who do you, who do you think you are? Ha ha ha, bless your soul You really think that you're in control? Well I think you're crazy I think you're crazy I think you're crazy 
same probably In I think you crazy In I think you crazy I think you crazy Probably on. Well we got we got through it, we got through it. Oh well done, brilliant mate. Excellent, uh, really brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. This is well nice, done, Mortal. Brilliant. My mum is listening, so I, better, I have to tone down the jokes, you know what I mean? Aye, aye, no wank jokes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. make him for I you. I know his mum, it's all right. I know his mum. <laughs> She'll give me a slap for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, this next tune. This next tune's called Go Below, and if you like it, it's one of my own songs, it's, uh, it's on YouTube. If you just type in Murdo Mitchell, Go Below, you should be able to find it. It's not, you can't listen to it on Spotify or anything yet, but hopefully it'll be on the next, the, the EP. But it's soon to be released. Breaking my way through your outer shell To find out your heart's not doing too well Your voice has been deafened, what should I do? You've been broken in pieces, can I be you? stars above And what happened? How are you lost soul? Your heart was a quarry And he dug a big hole Your mind's a journey so is a book Where's that part of your heart gone that he took It's an imperfect cadence there at the end. I don't, I don't end on the, the starting chord. 
fantastic. Like a surprise to that, you know. Uh, right. Brilliant, Marta. Outstanding. How, how, what do you, when do you want me, what, how many songs do you want me to play here, Stuart? One, eight, ten. <laughs> You know, I, th I think the uh, I think the audience wants you to keep going all night. I think so. the audience wants you to keep going. Yeah, all night. It's fantastic. Okay, I'll play. I'll play another two songs. I'll play another two songs. Yeah. Go for Aye, it. Absolutely. Yeah. Good man. Cool. This one is a uh, this one's a cover by of a Tom Grennan song, and uh, I just quite like it. It's, it's quite good. And uh, due to years and years of being a, a, a lonely, lonely teenage boy, uh, I did, I developed great rhythm in my right hand. Um, <laughs> which is where the triple strums come from. You know? Your mum's listening. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she's muted though, she's muted. <laughs> this is something. I had no idea now the message you said with it and click is I'm falling in love. Yes, I'm falling in love with you, with you now with you. With you, with you now with you. Still wondering why my thoughts seem clear. I'm standing behind a crystal tear. And will the time stop? And will the time drop? And will my footprints make a mark? Well, I can see the light now as I step out of the dark. There's something in the water. Call my name A two bits I had no idea now that message you said will be the creek is a falling in love it's a falling in love oh, with you with you now with you with you with you now There's something in the water A two kids I had no idea Now the message you said Well, it ain't creak Is I falling in love Is I falling in love With you now with you, with your own, with you now with your own. Nice one. Thank I'm you very much for the nice comments. That's lovely. I did actually do comedy once, but it didn't go down very well. Like I'm, I got a minus one star review from the BBC. <laughs> I did actually. They said. Where did the BBC know, Marto? The BBC know he haw. <laughs> They said, they wrote, they wrote, they said, that would have been, I was supporting a, a woman called Ava Vidal, who's an art comedian, but uh, uh, in Edinburgh Festival, and this was when I was about 13, and they said, it would have been a four-star show if it hadn't been for the, the young boy to start telling inappropriate jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they gave it a three-star show. So technically, that's a minus one-star review for me. <laughs> uh, Which is something. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much, Rod. Jesus. Thank, thank, thanks, everyone. By the way. Um, okay, this next song is uh, the last song. It's a song off the CD, and uh, it's called "It's called Please Buy My CD." <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and if you do buy a CD, there's a PayPal link that will appear shortly. If you do buy it, I'll, I'll sign it for you. Uh, on the off chance I become famous, um, <laughs> however, it would not be worth anything unless I, I became famous and, and then died. 
Um, <laughs> but I am, I am definitely Don't do going, that. I am definitely Don't going to die. Do that. I am definitely going to die. So it's a, it's an investment, is what I'm saying. Oh, it's an heirloom. It's an heirloom. Uh, yeah. that, ah, <laughs> right. So it'll be on like and also Antiques multi- Roadshow 2094. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's multi-purpose as well, you know, you could use it as a coaster if you don't like the music, you know, there's, there's plenty. <laughs> there's, uh, anyway, this next song uh, is, a, is an original song and I hope you enjoy it and thanks for listening, thanks for having me. I've just realised how red I look in this, I look like I've been out in the sun all day. I told you it's 19 degrees, man, it's <laughs> tropical here! Taps off either, taps off either. Taps off! I wouldn't I wouldn't, wanna, I wouldn't take her top off now, I don't wanna. Uh, no, I need taps off here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't want to embarrass you. And a shame and sorrow Eating me day to day God was right about temptation The devil that feeds on it The darkness it clouds my vision I only blame myself for this This loss of love I only blame myself for this Scrounging for my salvation Instinct took over me An underwhelming sensation No more I can guarantee I've got it, my heart is hollow I drank from the poison cup I'm finding it hard to swallow This wound of ours ain't healing all. No. It says our man's behaving badly like a comedy show that they put on for nurses. Twin the bars in here and I've known. Ladies and gentlemen, put it together for Murdo Mitchell. Thank you very much. Very much. Excellent. Oh, that was great. Fantastic. Awesome. Superb. Hey.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right, I mean, uh, it's a bit weird because oh, you don't play all the time. Uh, you, you're not always warmed up. When you know, when I, honestly, so when I was gigging in London three times a week, it was like, oh, like I felt felt on it, you know. So we've got a question for you, Murdo. Uh, this, Jeff this, might be a, this might be a supplementary musical question as well. So, but, so, okay. so Jeff, Jeff Errol asked, you're a cool guy, but what is the song that you really like, but which you would never play in public because it's so uncool? Well, okay, I'll tell you what, right? There's, a, there's this song, which is... A... <laughs> it's kind of it's kinda uncool. I don't often play it in public, but it's not really necessarily because it's uncool. It's mainly because I'd probably get battered. Uh, it, it's <laughs> way, so, <laughs> so uh, let's say uh, let's say Ed was uh, let's say you were giving me uh, giving me lift at a gig. I'd maybe play this song for you, okay? So this one's this one's <laughs> with you, Ed, okay? <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. You've got a wee baldy head. <laughs> You've got a wee baldy heat. I'd ask you for a hat, but I think you might need that. Just a wee baldy heat. <laughs> You've got a wee baldy heat. You've got a wee baldy heat. I'd ask you for shampoo, but there's nothing you could do. Just a wee body heat. Hang on while I mute you. You've got a wee body heat. You've got a wee body heat. I'd ask you for a comb, but there's no hair on your dome. <laughs> a wee body heat. You've got a wee body heat. You've got a wee body heat. I'd ask you for some wax. I get shoe shine at the max. <laughs> Just a wee body heat. Oh, Don't buy a CDs, anybody. <laughs> oh. There we go. Splendid Mardo, stuff. You're an, you're an absolute star. Now, as you know, this is uh, mental health nurses, but it's everybody really. You know, times. Lockdown, London, or the rest of it. What have you been doing to be can keep your your own mental health good? What have you been doing to keep your well being? Um, yeah, well, it's obviously a bit. It's a vast different. Like, I mean, I've been. I was living in London for four years, and then, uh, and I just worked up getting all. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd worked up a network of people. You know, I went down originally. I was busking mainly when I was like eighteen, and then, and then after over the course of a while, I get gigs and then I'd, whatnot, and, and eventually I built up, and then my band then came down to join me in London, so we all got a flat together. And, it, and so it was also it was good it was good you know it was going really good and then uh, and just as things are getting pick, picking up you know like just as things fucking were, covid getting, and then covid came along and the th I, kinda, I, I saw it kind of happening so what happened was we just before lockdown we all decided it was best um if we move back up to scotland because all the gigs got like, all the gigs got cancelled straight away because you was, knew that matt hancock was gonna <laughs> cock it up <laughs> Exactly, exactly, exactly. And so obviously it's a big contrast coming up here. But I'm just trying to make it, being the most of it, you know, and uh, and, and I, I prefer the nice Scottish air, you know, and uh, <laughs> and, and uh, less Londoners. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, You've just lost about 20 <laughs> CD sales, you have your head, man. No, no I, think, no, I, think, I you, think they've you got really insight. Get, you don't really get Londoners anyway, you get mainly, uh, you get like, you get like, London's just a big mixing pot of, of everybody. You know, when I first moved down to London, I knocked, I'd bump into somebody in the tube, and uh, I'd always say, "I'm oh, sorry, I'm sorry," you know, and I think, oh, "What they are rude," you know. Give it a year living there, man. I've just done a barge through everybody, man. Out <laughs> <laughs> of my way, you know, get out of the way. Yeah, I, I've uh, got to get to that place really quickly for no reason. I was getting angry when people weren't standing on the right side of the escalator. <laughs> Do you know, no, follow left. Can you not read, man? <laughs> like, know? like, I remember that tenants advert back? You're, you're too young, but all the Scottish people who remember what it was like to be a Scottish person down in London and tenants had the advert <laughs> Caledonia. That's what it's like looking at the tube map. <laughs> There's more destinations in the tube map than there are cities in Scotland, for yeah. fuck's sake. I mean, 
<laughs> it's also funny the fact yeah, that the Scotland, the Scottish tube is just uh, it's just two circles, isn't it's it? It's quarter and corner. If you can get pissed and around if, it, and if you get on the wrong tube, you'll just end up in the right place eventually. Yeah. Just yeah. round. <laughs> yeah. That's, but that's civilized Murdo. That's a civilized yeah. city yeah. that defined. You know, there's no inner. There's just an inner or an outer circle, which is yeah. defined by an extra twenty thousand pound in your house price if you're in the inner to the outer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, well, the I, I answer the question mainly is just I've, I've been trying to make the most of it by, like, so when you're gigging all the time and everything, you're, you're, uh, you, you're playing music all the time, so, like, the, when you get home, some of the last things you want to do is pick up your guitar and write a new song, whereas now there's a lot more time I can focus on writing new music and just try and make the most of it, you know, just keep, you know. I'll, well, I'll we really appreciate it. Uh, well, no, well, thank you very much for having me. It's yeah, been you an absolute pleasure London, despite then, if that you kept last your flat on it if you just left No, we didn't it, keep no, we, just... no, we, we were just we were out of contract anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, so uh, you say. That's what your uh, manager <laughs> told you to say. <laughs> yeah, we, and so we just we just we 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 messaged him saying we were we were away. <laughs> we messaged him once we left. Due to artistic differences, but... we must return to Scotland. <laughs> 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 yeah. What the Beatles getting out of Hamburg? <laughs> <laughs> they had a fun time in Hamburg, though, didn't they? Uh, I'm sure you're having a fun time too, but your mum's here, so be quiet. Uh, right, anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and your sister's here as well, I've noticed. So, um, listen, Murdo, thank you so much. Do you want to do a plug of your CD and let people know how they can purchase it? Yeah, well, there's a PayPal link. I think Ed put it on the, the chat. It's yes, on the that. chat, and I'll and speak you, about if, it in the outro as if well. If you buy it, you just put your name and your, no, your address as a reference. And then, because uh, it will not come round your house. And then, <laughs> and then I'll send one out. I'll send them out to you. Um, or, you I mean you, if you buy it, or you could buy ten, give them to friends and family. You know, you know, buy I, them all I, if you I, want. I, well, well, that leads us on. I, that that leads us on to something else that maybe we should have brought up about nurses pay. And uh, Graham <laughs> Reevy has uh, Graham Reevy has asked as a favour, and actually rather than me try and pull something through, Graham, do you want to unmute and just um, put a shout out to people to, to complete a survey? Um, while we're all here together as a community. I go for it, Graham. Go yeah, for it, Graham. no, it's really, really important because what we're trying to do is get as much of the voice of the members into how the pay strategy and what we're going to be asking for in, in any pay talks. If you notice, Ricky Sumac uh, yesterday put quite a lot of faith in the pay review body. I think, uh, you know, for, for those in, 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 in England, the pay review body is still in existence, but whether we've got faith in it is a, another matter because it seems to be the treasury that seems to be running it. Um, Scotland, we seem to be going down a different path at the moment. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's just it's really important whether you're private sector, public sector, um, wherever you're working, whatever healthcare environment, fill out the survey, give us your views, let us know what you want us to be looking for and let us know what the red lines are when we are going to be going into and to, to guide people that are going to be doing the negotiating for us. Really, really important. Get it around your workplaces as well, folks. Mm, All yeah. our and members really need to do it. At the moment, we've got, you know, a fairly good start. People have filled it out so far to actually get a good um, representative voice across. So we really need to be working on this, guys. Mm. No and yeah, this is one of those things where people really need to speak up because if people don't make their voices heard, then somebody else is going to make the case on your behalf and it might not be what you want to be said absolutely and and let's be clear as well you know well well we're, we're all on here we've all been working through covid and um, particularly in mental health learning disability addiction services um where our services cams you know we, we, we're still trying to provide services covid aside we're still trying to reach people and care for people and all of this shite that's been perpetuated and propelled around um, heroes, no heroes wear capes and how we're all angels and things like that, where people try to make a living and, and try to do good. But we've got families, we've got friends, we've got communities that we're part of. You know, let's let's not let that seep into any future pay negotiations where we're plauditory and um, vacuous commentary from people you know, who have been advised by a man like Dominic Cummings. Let's be absolutely clear here. Yeah, let's be really, really clear about about well, who's pulling the from. strings. Right, let's be clear about who's pulling the strings. 
um, we are living in the world of yes minister where people who are unelected in fact worse than a civil servant somebody who's not even a civil servant um, is driving strategy for the whole of the UK, and and well, look, we remember we, he we is that clear. most he is that most hated of things. He is the unelected bureaucrat. That's and bureaucracy having, in having led the uh, this charge against uh, Europe, we must leave these unelected bureaucrats behind. He's one of them. <laughs> oh <laughs> well, look, there's look, and just as Murdo walks away, he's left some nice paintings. Murdo, Murdo, what's that painting behind you? Is that Martin Luther King? Unmute oh, yourself. Hang on a second. I'll yeah, have to yeah. unmute him again. I'll bring him over. They're asking him to do right, that. He's going <laughs> to bring them over. Molly, you be quiet. Don't sell his paintings for him. <laughs> it's, uh, it's JFKFC. <laughs> <laughs> That's outstanding. And appropriate for this week. Mm -hmm. And then this one is uh, Martin Luther Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> and did you have a McDonald's one? I think there was a McDonald's we, one, wasn't we, there? We we had a McDonald's one, but uh, it was, it's been sold. And it was a Ronald Reagan <laughs> as Ronald McDonald. Okay. Uh, and then there's and then there's an I you know you know uh, you know Obama. It was an I hop, I hope, but I hop. You know the hope campaign. It was, was I hop the International House of Pancakes. Well. <laughs> see these, sorry, I'm getting messages, I don't know how to reply to them. See these are ten pounds and, and I'll 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 pay for the delivery anywhere. So You'll pay for the delivery anywhere. Anywhere. Oh, Fiji. Yeah. Uh, you heard it. Oh, there goes your profit margin. <laughs> there goes your profit margin right there, Murdo. <laughs> uh, we will not be held record, uh, accountable at uh, RMN behaving badly for any excessive postage costs which Murdo incurs as a result yeah. of this. No, you said you'd, you said you'd cover it, I thought, no? Yeah. No, no, no. Right, it's time for you to go. Bye, Murdo. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, truth is yeah. fiction, fiction is truth. It's, it's all there, it's all Orwellian now, isn't it, anyway? So, you know, we're coming to the end uh, or well, the show this week. Orwell, we, we've got a couple of prizes. Murdo um, is, is going to finish, uh, well, we, we will purchase a CD from Murdo so that you don't think that they're taking liberties with a young man who's living in a loft painting pictures. No, they're, they're of, taking liberties, guys, they're taking liberties, to, um, trust me. <laughs> we are absolutely taking liberties. Uh, Was this your only gig this month, Murdo? <laughs> Aye. He's been doing his own gigs, I've been watching them And it's full of young continental women going We love you Murdo, when are you coming to my city? <laughs> he can't you respond because it's You could be a catfish with that voice man You could be a total <laughs> Aye, I'll turn the screen off, I'll catfish you alright So um, <laughs> The, uh, the the moving on. on we, we've got a couple of <laughs> we've got a couple of prizes. So Ed, who, who's Murdo going to send? Courtesy of us paying for it by our patrons. <laughs> yeah. Who's Murdo going to send a CD to? The winner of a CD from Murdo Mitchell is going to be drumroll, Jeff Earl. Well done, Jeff Earl wins the CD. Uh, how Fabulous. You how did you pick that? Hmm. How did you Ed, how did you pick that? Because he, he gave us the question about the song that you wanted. Yep, you, you and so when you ask oh, a question, yeah, yeah. your name gets entered in the prize draw. That's oh, how it works. So there you are. Yeah. And for our signed book uh, by Lee, I'm only in it for the parking. I need a drum for this. I'm just shaking my computer here. This is terrible. The winner is going to be Sarah Waters. Well done. Sarah submitted the question about the Paralympic. Mm -hmm. um, question to Lee. And yeah. we have one bottle of whiskey. A bottle of Tam Navulin. It's going to Tam be. It's, it's my current favourite. It's lovely stuff. Oh, we, we select that. Please I'm not sponsor us, Tam Navulin. <laughs> uh, well, we tried Highland Park and they weren't having it. I'm not going to no. finish in the bottle. Um, they followed us on Twitter, we, but that's not good. They enough. did follow us, but following's no paying the bills, is it? No. So, um, or Murdo for that matter. So, we have a bottle of Tam the Villain. Is it the double cask special one, Ed? This one is a. He's uh, sending you an empty bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is bloody good. I have a sniff. <laughs> have a sniff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a little sniff left in it for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's so all we need for going over the top, nurse. Now you're a real superhero <laughs> with that fucking cape. Over you go now. Go and change a bedpan or something. <laughs> you don't need it because you're an angel. 
Um, <laughs> Angels don't need to have wings. Yes, it's got it's got three letters on it. It says P P E. Yeah. <laughs> if you pour this over yourself, nothing will infect you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is this is what they call pre hand sanitizer, and uh, it's it's been in three different sherry casks apparently. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I wish I'd been in three different sherry casks. <laughs> but the winner of that, and this was totally chosen at random from people in tonight's show, and it is Lauren Kennedy. Well done. You get your prize. We'll be uh, in touch. We'll be pinging you a message so that you can send us your address so that we can send it to you. What we do with that one is the number of pages we have, we ping uh, Ed and I uh, send numbers backwards and forwards like a bit of a protracted battleships and then we <laughs> arrive on a square. So it's a bit like celebrities. You just squares, call the winner a battleship. <laughs> I know, Lauren, she's not a battleship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm the one with the battleship keg, grey car. And I, I couldn't give it to my wife and we landed on her, so I've got a house full of whiskey. <laughs> that was a very convenient... Uh, you shuffled and everybody around. my wife oh, next door. Oh, what a door. coincidence. Oh, what a coincidence. <laughs> um, so, but yes, them's the rules. So, them's the rules. <laughs> um, so, yes, so that's us. We're coming to the end of the gig and it's been And indeed the end of our tethers, yeah. Yeah, we do have we do have an announcement about our next gig, um, and we should probably put that out you there for you now. We recognise that. that lockdown is ending, and it's okay now to spend. If you're in the street and you float and you don't touch another person and you stay at home whilst you're in the street, it's okay to spend it with seven other families who you Was don't know. Is that your Boris Chinese Johnson takeaway. impression, Stuart? Well, I've got his hair. Look. Uh... So, have you noticed that? So he um, his isn't he... see through, mate. <sighs> Like about, well, it's not. It's his policies that are see through. Ah, so, very good. We um we have a gig coming up with Loki, uh, Darren McGarvey, who is the author of Poverty Safari. We spoke and about that around episode five, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of months ago. All about social um, inequalities. It's about living in communities where. Uh, where we talk about kindness. Kindness is a, is a really expensive commodity when nobody gives a shit about you and you're expected to be kind about to, to, to other people. And as mental health nurses and, and speaking as that, we, you know, communities that we, we've got a lot of experience of working in. Um, and so Darren's going to come on and our hope is that we'll, we'll be doing some um, extracts and some aspects of the book. Um, a bit of a different vibe, um, less around um, the, the, the humour and really focus and then on what living in a, in a community where inequalities are abound and it's really hard to escape the um, the labels and the barriers that are pushed down upon you. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we're going to link that to some of the stuff that Ed and I spoke about around the Marmot Review, which has conveniently been just pushed off into the sidelines, hasn't it, Ed? Uh, it's been very handy. This, uh, this virus has been beneficial in so many ways for the government that doesn't want any difficult questions being asked about some incredibly bad uh, policies, decisions and attitudes that they've perpetuated for the last 10 years. Yeah. Which is probably so the most we, succinct way that I can put it. But. Yeah, yeah. And so we've got Darren um, is going gonna, is gonna to come on with us and uh, talk through. Anybody who's bought the book, um, Poverty Safari, we would absolutely recommend it. We know there's a number of um, listeners and followers who, off the back of um, Ed and I talking about Marmot and talking about uh, a couple of books that we had read in some of our earlier pods, if you've read it, then we'd really encourage you uh, to, to bring questions in. Darren's mm -hmm. really... Um, he's so good at, at talking off the top of his head and ad lib, and he's also a rapper. Um, so he, he's someone who can quickly articulate his his, his thoughts. That will be Saturday the thirteenth. Very different, and that we'll have limited. We're going to do that in a much more kind of contained environment, so that everybody gets the chance to engage as well. So watch out for some more information around that. And that's really going to be uh, an episode where we need people to to send in questions as well. Yeah, um, there's some amazing resources if you. One and and um, I didn't buy the book. I bought the audio book, and I've got to say I, I found it incredibly powerful listening to the words being read by the author. Um, I think that really added a, an incredible dimension to the, to the book, and it, it made it just seem that much more real. Um, I think hearing him actually describe it himself rather than read it in the book and and sort of projecting um, 
my own voice and, and my own intonation onto things. Um, there's some uh, really great uh, similar resources out there, things like the Equality Trust and Wilkinson and Pickett's book, The Spirit Level, which yeah, we also spoke about. Spirit Level is fabulous. Um, a really incredible book, really important book. And again, something that has just been shelved um, and, and completely ignored. But they're, they're such uh, vital issues for us to start addressing if well, we're we going to see. look at issues around the social factors, the social determinants of mental health, physical health. We can health. see the step back now, can't we, Ed, mm -hmm. about employers having to pay percentages of furloughs, furlough schemes. It's all becoming mm -hmm. a little bit driven by the economy, driven by the Treasury. Um, interestingly, that probably why um, certain individuals were late for garden party press conferences. This was a bit of a way mm -hmm. to on the Treasury how to run their business, but anyway. I um, doubt it so, I think we should probably end on a high note with some applause for people um, yes. because it's been a fabulous evening. Um, if we could open up all of these microphones, You're can all you do unmuted. that? Leader? Can we have a round <laughs> yeah. of applause for, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, for, Lee, for Lee Ridley? For Lee Ridley. Absolutely. And can we have a round of applause for Murdo Mitchell? Yay! Yay! Very much. A folk on here who I know would get to gigs, and uh, myself and, and my wife included, and we've just not been able to get to gigs. So Murdo coming into your living rooms this evening was just absolutely spectacular. And not getting out to a comedy club and, and getting the quality of comedian like Lee, absolutely outstanding. So, so I'm going to pass over to you, Ed, to, to talk us out, my friend. Uh Thank you for joining us for the third live show of RMN Behaving Badly. An extra special thanks to our amazing guests, Lee Ridley, aka Lost Voice Guy, and Murdo Mitchell. Keep on arguing and calling out the nonsense on Twitter at RMNBB Podcast. Stuart is at Stu and McKenzie, and I'm at Ed Freshwater. Lee is at Lost Voice Guy, and Murdo is at Murdo Mitchell. Our website, rmnbehavingbadly.co.uk, is where you can find show notes, our blog, sign up to the mailing list, link to our social media account, and listen to all of our previous episodes. Lee's book is available from that evil megalith Amazon, or his website, lostvoiceguy.co.uk. You can buy Murdo CD by punting a tenner to him at paypal.me forward slash Murdo Mitchell, and he'll even pay the postage. Huge thank you to our patrons who make this podcast and our live shows possible. And a special shout out to Rod Thompson, Becky Hoskins, Daisy, Jenny Lee Sims, Lauren Kennedy, Lee Orton, Sarah Hivey, the venerable Ali Upton, Billy Drysdale, Katie Sutton, Nat Freighter, Maureen Dolan, who literally signed up about 20 minutes ago, Paul Jeb, happy birthday sir, Paula Shields, Phil Noyes, Natalie Brooks, and Sherry Alden. You can become a patron of the podcast by visiting patreon.com forward slash RMN Behaving Badly. The intro music for this episode is by EpiJ, and all the other tunes are by Kevin McLeod. We are, of course, a topical podcast relying on daft people doing the wrong thing for our content, so a special shout out to Matt Hancock and the Conservatives for their continued ineptitude. Without them, we'd have far less to talk about. Although, of course, we'd sooner have a health minister we could cheer on and wasn't about as much use as one of his stupid apps. Please make sure you subscribe to this podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, SoundCloud, and all the other places where a pod might well be cast. Leave us a review on iTunes too, because we are only in this for the glory. Join us again on June the 13th, where we'll be joined by acclaimed rapper and author Darren McGarvey. We'll be talking inequality, mental health, and probably mentioning liaison coordinators. If you want to be fully prepped, buy a book probably safari right now and send in your questions. Once again, thanks for listening, and until we see you again, stay well, stay safe. Speak to you soon.